In this episode, I'm gonna install a sewn adapter kit on my Mazda RX-8. So if you're new to this channel, I post videos two times per week covering RX-8 tips, maintenance videos, awesome mods and also my drift build. So if you're not a subscriber yet, definitely consider subscribing. The Richard Zone adapter works with your stock OMP to inject clean two-stroke coil into your combustion chamber to lubricate the apex seals. The advantage is better lubrication and no buildup of combustion residues. So prepare to say goodbye to your dirty 4-cycle oil. The kit is available for right-hand drive and left-hand drive, so if you're interested, the link to it will be in the description. Here are the tools you're gonna need. A ratchet with extension and 10mm socket, a 10mm wrench, a T-handle, normal pliers, bend nose pliers, a house pick, a flathead screwdriver, a mini ratchet kit with a small ratchet, 10mm socket and a small extension. This kit will make the whole installation easy and fast, so it's worth to getting it. Next, 1 liter of Primex alongside a measuring bottle and a funnel. The rotary bump Primex kit is my choice as I use it to Primex. A small and big funnel, a 5 liter bottle, a fluid pump or turkey baster, and a cross wrench. Since I don't have the stock airbox, I can't show you how to get it out, but SX Rotary made a great video on how to do it. The link to it will be in the description. First off, jack up the front of the car, put it on jack stands and remove the passenger side wheel. Slide a pen under your car below the radiator drain bolt. Slowly unscrew the bolt and take it out. Release the cap to increase the flow. When there's no more coolant coming out, screw back the bolt but don't over tighten it. Take out the pen and pour the coolant in a 5 liter plastic bottle. Now put back your cap. Next up, unplug your battery and take it out. Use your wrench with extension to remove the bottom bolt. Now push the bottom part in and pull the upper part to get the plastic loose. When done, take it out. Now remove the two bolts on the left with your 10mm wrench. When done, take the whole thing out. Next, you need to remove the hose above the OMP. Slide back the clamp with your pliers. Use your hose pick to loosen up the inside of the tube. Now take the tube out of the top holder and with both hands twist it and pull it out. Now let's have a look at our oil metering pump. To take it out you have to remove two bolts in the back and one in the front. Take your mini ratchet, put on the extension and 10mm socket. Position the ratchet on the top bolt and leave it hanging. Now go to the front, grab the ratchet and start releasing the bolt. Do the same for the bottom one. Put the 10mm socket on your T-handle and finish removing what's left of the two bolts. When done, take them out. Time to remove the oil lines. Tear some pieces of masking tape and wrap them around the oil lines. Take a marker and write a number on each one so you won't mix them when putting them back. Put the pen under your OMP. Take a 10mm socket and release all four bolts holding the oil lines. Unscrew them with your hand and take them out. Now remove the remaining front bolt by using your mini ratchet. When done, carefully loosen the OMP, take it out and put it on the red metal bar. Take a paper towel and clean up the oil. Now remove the black gasket that is either on the part you took out or on the internal part like in my case. Position it like this and place it inside the outer part of the OMP so that it sits nice and snug. Remove the copper washer plate and be careful about the small washers that could be on the oil lines or could have fallen off. Take a piece of cloth and wipe the internal part of the OMP. Next, take a 5cm bolt with no head and screw it in where the front bolt was. Take the paper gasket and place it facing like this, so that the whole thing looks like this. I had to make two small cuts on the upper part of the seal because otherwise it wouldn't fit at all. Now take a look at how the OMP hole is aligned and align the one on your sewn adapter the same way. When done, align the external part to match your sewn adapter so that everything will bolt in place on the first try. Next, gently push the sewn adapter until you hear it click in place. Now take out the dummy bolt. Position the external part of the OMP and push it in the sewn adapter until it clicks in place. Now take your new long bolt Slide it in the front hole and tighten it with your hand. Do the same for the two long rear bolts. Tighten the rear ones with the T-handle and the front one with your mini ratchet. Now take the bolt from the oil line, slide on the washer. Next comes the oil line 
and in front you put a big copper washer. With this method put back the oil lines and tighten them, but don't over tighten them. You want to put the lines in front of the coolant tube so you can pull them further due to the extra space the stone adapter took. Put back the coolant tube and slide the clamp into place. Now take the tube that came with the sewn adapter and by using your plumber pliers squeeze the clamp and put it on the tube. Just like that. Next push the tube all the way up the adapter's receiver. When done use your pliers to secure the clamp in place. Like this. Unplug this connector near your washer bottle. Take your mini ratchet and remove the bolt behind it. Remove the other bigger grey connector if you have it. Use your pump to remove all the liquid inside the reservoir. Next. Remove this small pump if you have it and take out the reservoir. Remove the small grey connector and take out the small rubber tube. Now that the washer is free you can empty the remaining water. Use your flathead screwdriver to pry out the black plug. When loose take it out with your hand. Now insert in the new bottle by pushing the rubber inside with your screwdriver. And there we go our bottle is ready. For now I'll block my headlight washer hose with a bolt since I don't have anywhere to connect it. Screw the bottle on the plate that came with it and tighten the bolt with a ratchet. Just like this. Now take your long bolt, put on the washer, put it inside the top left hole and put the plastic spacer on the other side. Position the plate so that the red bolt fits inside the lower hole. When done tighten the bolt, insert your old one on the other side and tighten them down with your ratchet. Next connect back your small tube and also the grey connector. You wanna shorten the hose so that it has a bigger drop. This will allow the oil to flow faster inside the adapter. Next up secure your tube with zip ties. Put a clamp on the top part of the tube, slide it on the reservoir's receiver and secure it in place. When done tighten it with your ratchet. Now fill your washer bottle with the fluid you pumped out or pour in some new one and fill your oil reservoir with some good old Itemit Supremix oil. And there we go the sewn adapter kit is now fully installed. As a precaution I like to premix my fuel a bit heavier just in case something goes wrong. So in my case I've put 10 liters of fuel so now I can add 80 milliliters of premix oil. You can use my racing premix chart for reference. The link to it will be in the description. If you're getting into premixing then I recommend getting the rotary bum premixing kit because it makes the whole process faster and easier. Put on the cap and close the tank. Now it's time to pour in your coolant. If it was old then measure the quantity and add some new one. When it won't suck in anymore turn on your car and blast your heat at full power. Next add the remaining coolant and maybe some more if necessary. Close the cap and let the car work for at least 15 minutes. In the meanwhile look for any leaks under the car and make sure that the temperature gauge does not spike. Also make sure you didn't get any check engine lights. And we're done! A common question is do I still have to premix after installing the stone adapter? Well you've solved the problem of the oil type not the quantity. So yes I will continue to use my daily premix ratio. If you're interested the link to the adapter and the tools will be in the description. Also now you can finally ditch the mineral oil in your pan and go full synthetic. So if you like this video give it a big like and hit the subscribe button so you won't miss out on the next episode.